Hi, check out what I found in the dumpster. Um, ordinarily, I wouldn't take uh, CRTs like this, but I thought, hey, I'm into uh, vintage computers, so I don't actually have a proper RGB monitor. And a lot of like uh, late 80s uh, era computers, they all had like an RGB output, and uh, along with the composite uh, video output as well. But to get the best quality, you really needed like to use the RGB output. So I thought, try and do a conversion of an old dumpster CRT TV into an RGB monitor. And I just found both of these lying side by side. We've got a Sony Trinitron. It's got a VHS player integrated. Fantastic. I actually love the form factor of this one. This Samsung uh, Hytron monitor here, it's like big and bulky. Uh, I'm not terribly taken by that. And we can almost certainly get a service manual for the Sony. I don't know about the uh, Samsung one, maybe. You know, it's not a one hung low brand, but uh, of course Sony are famous for their uh, service manuals. So um, I'm gonna power them on, see if they work. Now, of course, the good thing about this, uh, at least this VHS one, most likely the uh, Samsung as well, it looks reasonably uh, modern, is that uh, it'll have like an on-screen display stuff, which means it almost certainly has like an RGB uh, capable chipset on there that's generating RGB to actually send text overlay images to the screen. So that may make the modifications um, easier to turn into an RGB monitor. So let's try the Sony one. There's a standby LED. Power up. Oh, yeah, I heard the uh, high tension. Nothing. Hey, hello. Line. Works a treat. Input select. Oh, there we go. That's the, uh, of course, analog TV has gone the way of the dodo. I might link in my analog TV transmission to a quick timer. Re record. <laughs> no tape inside. Put in a tape. <laughs> then program enter it. Okay. That looks like it's the Sony's working a treat. Beauty. Just try the Samsung. No standby. Yeah, I heard the high tension start up. That's working a treat. And yeah, it's, of course, it's got the uh, color overlay and everything. So that one, I expected these to work. Um, they're just old. They didn't want them anymore, so they threw them out. They didn't throw them out because they're suddenly uh, busted. Um, red, green, and blue. It's got like an RGB overlay there that uh, we can actually tap into to do uh, modification directly to convert this into an RGB monitor. Both of these work, but I much prefer the Sony here, it's just, it's smaller, it's nicer, it's, the screen is flatter, this, the Samsung's actually quite curved, it's just big, like for a big, for a monitor, I prefer this Sony one, very nice, it's kind of like old Macintoshy form factor. Have a crack at the Sony, shall we? It's got uh, composite um, in, but it doesn't have any uh, SCART connectors or anything else on the back. And of course, a lot of your uh, Sony Trinitron uh, fanboys will claim this is vastly superior to this uh, Samsung rubbish over here, and they're probably right. And it's a KV14VM 5G for those playing along at home. And if you follow me on Twitter, and you should, because I tweet like a boss daily, and that's where you get all my latest updates and photos of stuff I find in the dumpster room and all that sort of jazz. Anyway, you can get a service manual for this thing, but it doesn't seem to be free, and when you try to use one of the paid services to get it. So you pay your money and it's like, file not found, great. Put out a call to uh, see if we can actually get the service manual for this thing, which will help. We don't necessarily need it, but it's just nice. You know, I like to go through the service manual and show you the schematics. Haven't got it yet, but it does exist. And there's tons of variations of this model too, by the way. And I actually like the rather, uh, Compact nature of compact, but you know, trust me, compared to the uh, uh, Samsung, this is just a much sexier CRT monitor. On off switch, RF antenna input. Oh, hands up if you remember G code for uh, recording programs. <laughs> that was the duck's guts back in the day. Nice. Should just pop right off. Beautiful. Just a quick visual inspection for dead cockroaches and other nasties. You never know. They just love the warmth inside these CRTs. Well, she could do with a good dust out. Yeah, looks in good nick otherwise. Oh, there you go for all you yoke fanboys. There's a nice common mode chokes on the mains input there. I'm really liking that. Multi-ball construction. Of course, your uh, tape mechanism's all inside there for your VCR. And we've got these interesting board-to-board -board, uh, interconnects here, which drop down to 
a once again a single sided piece of bead none of that double sided rubbish cost too much down on the lower level down in there that's going to have all of our on-screen stuff that we want to tap into so most likely we're not going to be doing any tapping on this board here there's the high tension section no touchy of course so the tube would still be charged up employs integral implosion protection replaced with the same type tube rather good nick if uh, it just needs a good dust out that'll be horrible in the lab yeah you can really see the dust it's not great you really want to give them a good dust out yeah the problem with these integrated units is uh well it's all the uh high voltage stuff a crt drive and things like that that's all easily accessible but the one we want the processor board down in there um that's not going to be as easy to get to so maybe like the uh, samsung which is just a traditional uh, crt might have been easier to uh access but anyway i like the uh, sony now I was going to go and uh, figure out how to get uh, this main board out here so that I can access the processor board down the bottom but then I saw this little board it's got various ribbon cables go into it one of them goes up to the driver board the, the neck board up here and of course look at the pins RGB there they are fantastic so that's our RGB drive signal and that for all the world looks like a processor board so i just disconnected the cables and ta-da we have a video processor now this big beast here is it's a motorola um, mc4402 and we can go to the data sheet for that and sure enough it's a video processor and uh, the thing we're looking for is rgb and sure enough we have look three resistors three diodes here almost certainly rgb and this is the uh cable there it is b out g out r out so we need the inputs the rgb inputs for this thing and if we have a look at the board to board inner connect over here sure enough osd which is on screen display red green blue so they're the input signals so i thought wow we've really gotten lucky here we don't have to take out the main board all we've got to do is tap into the rgb signals on this chip because it's going to have rgb output which is going over here which is going off to the uh, neck driver which has all the driver transistors on there you can see those there sorry for the cr crudity of the video here didn't have time to build up the scale or paint it they're our red green blue uh driver trannies down in there so that's what uh, drives the high voltage into the uh neck and of course we, we don't want to tap into that we just want to uh tap into the analog input side of this thing not the output which is going into the neck driver our pins 22 20 324 they're our rgb pins but wah 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 we've come a guts a look the three rgb pins are just tied via these caps down to ground that's it there are no signals going into those pins at all so what the heck is going on here well if we have a look here's our rgb inputs down here i love these balls they've just got labeling to the wazoo look at this it's fantastic so four five six there through these three here we've just got some uh, test pads there's nothing uh, doing over there they go all the way over here all the way another test pad a whizzy wig around here and it looks like there we go some little uh, driver trannies down here or pre-driver trannies the uh, the main ones are up on the main uh neck board of course so we've got one two and the third one is uh down here and then these jumpers going over here and then the three signals actually oh will snake their way up here and basically go directly into the connector here so it basically bypasses this chip here although it does the rgb outputs are over here like this they do get uh mixed in with that but like that's it like we can't just feed rgb into this chip here or we can but we would have to act and actually select this 
as an input. Anyway, I asked on Twitter and on the YouTube community tab, which I'm using more and more, uh, by the way, and somebody pointed out that this one, which I was able to download, and it, it is the KV14VM5, but it's BR. It's the Brazilian model here. But hey, it, it's not the full service manual, but it's the schematics for it. And here's where we can see the dramatic differences. Even though it's the exact model, this appears different, right? So we know we've got this driver board with this Motorola chip, the 44022 uh, or whatever it is. And here we go. Here's our video processor over here. But it look, it's a it's a CXA 18715, and that's one of the classic Sony jungle ICs. I guess they call them. I'm not exactly sure why they call them jungle ICs, but I guess because it's a jungle of parts all around it when you look at the schematic. Anyway, here it buggers off to the neck board. Uh, OSG, red, green, blue inputs. It's got the blank in pin, which allows us to uh, switch between that. But this is a very different chip to the Motorola one that we've got. And not only that, but it's not, it, look, it shows that it's on the main board. So it's definitely like that, like the pinouts are all entirely different. It's not like a compatible version from Motorola or whatever very different chips. So this one, uh, you can see that the RGB lines, they come in here and they come from via these resistor dividers here from the our system control processor over here. Interestingly, the IC number's the same, IC301. It's IC301 on here as well, but it's a very different beast. It's absolutely remarkable. Um, yes, I am aware of the 8-bit guys video on converting an RG monitor into, I think it was a Samsung, into an RGB monitor. And so please don't add it in the comments. And yes, he shows the resistor divider here and he he tapped it, he like did some extra resistors down here and then, oh, I can't leave that on there, and then tapped those off um, and then switched the blanking pin here, which we could do exactly the same thing here, but this schematic, is not representative of this Australian model thing. It's like they've entirely, they've got added a daughter board and the main board's different, everything's different. It's nuts. And then somebody else also pointed out uh, this 14V model, so it's not the VM model, and this actually, it looks very different. Pictures, this one's a full service manual. It's got the whole kit and caboodle of how to uh, do everything. Absolutely fantastic. But the schematic in this is once again, oh, got the, look, they got the chips and everything. Oh, hats off. Fantastic. I love Sony service manuals. But uh, yeah, it is once again, it's very different. So many variations on these models. It's abs even between countries when it's only the country designator at the end that's different. Remarkable. You would think that Sony would want to like consolidate the bomb and sell it. I can understand like PAL versus CCAM and NTSC and all that sort of stuff. But you should be able to build the one model just for that. But no, they just did just change them willy nilly. Anyway, what we're interested in is this Motorola chip. And here it is, the Chroma 4 multi-standard video processor, aka jungle chip. Look at this, it's got uh, switched RGB inputs with separate saturation control. RGB drive incorporates contrast and brightness controls, auto gray scale, all sorts of stuff. And I love this uh, simplified block diagram they've got for us. So what's happening on this board here is that here's the red, green, blue outputs. They go, that goes off to the neck board. So that's driving the output. And then they've got red, green, blue inputs. And they do have those AC coupling caps there, but they're connected down to ground <laughs> so they're not switched at all and then they've got this fast com uh input uh we'll have a look at that in a minute because that uh that may be what we're doing and here is the uh y video inputs that would be coming from possibly maybe even a second jungle chip on the main board i don't know until i really uh, gut the thing or i can get access to the actual schematic uh for this thing three separate inputs coming from the main board over here and these please excuse the crudity of the model and when they've got some trennies here i don't know the exact uh, configurations and these basically mix into these signals here they basically tap into that and there's a red green blue and they bypass this chip like even though it could use these inputs here it 
chooses not to. So I'm not sure whether or not it it does it can't mix them like they want to. It can't switch. I I don't know what's going on. Anyway, they seem to be bypassing on this board. But you know, we don't care about having them on at the same time. All we care about is feeding this external input here. And of course, there's a where's the I squared C bus down here like this. I believe if we re go further on the data sheet, we'll see that we can actually switch this input via the I squared C, or we can, we can at least disable it. But let's look at this fast comm signal, shall we? By the way, here's a very good overview of how uh, this jungle chip integrates with the CRT. Here's our CRT down here. Here's our uh, three transistor driver that's on the neck board that we show. Here's the output uh, that we got. And then we've got the uh, the lot, the line output transformer over here. We've got the tripler, which generates the uh, extra high tension voltage, which goes into the, that's the no touchy part uh, that goes into the side of the, uh, the, the little cap on the CRT under there. If you're going to work on these safely, you have to uh, properly dis discharge that or, or though often there's a discharge resistor in, in them that will actually bleed away after some time. So we've got our RGB inputs over here, but I'm interested in this fast commutate down here. And I haven't seen that word used much except in uh, relation to motors. It basically means um, to switch. Okay, so our fast uh, commutate input level is uh, 0.5 volts minimum so under that and over over anything over one volt so you could tie it to like five the five volt rail uh, for example fast commutate a very fast active high switch but it doesn't tell you which thing it switches to when it, it, it it's high or low anyway use with text on the rgb inputs for overlay and text on picture we just want to switch right over to the rgb inputs we don't care that it's text or whether or not it's <laughs> like it's image coming from our vintage pc or whatever and this hardware switch may be enabled or disabled in software so it looks like maybe you can't switch it in software but you can enable it now this does actually go off to a uh, jumper link on the board so we can cut that jumper link or remove it and then we can uh, tie that input safely either high or low and let's just see what happens because the RGB inputs here are effectively uh, grounded via the, uh, the AC uh, cap in there but if we can get it to like switch over, then we'll know that it works. This is just a simple, easy test rather than having to feed in the RGB inputs and making sure the sync works and everything else. Let's just switch that pin over, just mod that board. It'll take 10 seconds to just jumper that link over and to either high or low, I don't know which one. It's like, meh, I don't know. Unless I put it in there and measure first, couldn't be bothered. It's quicker just to <laughs> jumper it over and hope you get lucky. So in that case, uh, we expect it to like switch over from say the noisy static analog tuner input or whatever it is, or the VCR or the line input over to a black screen or an RGB screen. And we could tie these RGB lines, like we could tie one of these high as well. So we could tie the red high we should just get an all red screen, for example. And what do you know? The typical application circuit has a Motorola 44140 here. It's exactly what we got on the board. So it's gonna, it looks like they've just stolen the typical output here. And it shows like 75 ohm uh, terminations on the RGB inputs. And, and if we have a look over here, RGB input amplitude, there you go. Um, your typical 700 millivolts peak to peak, I believe that's a fairly typical RGB input level. So in theory, we should be able to feed RGB inputs directly into there, no resist dividers or anything like that. Should you just able to whack them straight in? And this data sheet is very comprehensive. It's a uh, color different stages. There's all the blanking and the clamping and the luminance and all sorts of stuff. It's all oh, actually there's the there's the bypass. Okay, okay. So there's our RGB inputs. Fast commutation, blanking, fast commutation, logic, bypass. Oh yes, right. So it comes in there, blanking. It no. Anyway, it shoves it out there. And because I know some people are going to want to see inside the uh, Samsung one, well, actually one useful part about having a big curved screen in this, you can just rotate it. It's a built-in rotational thing. Anyway, see, this one is much, much simpler to uh, get at the main board down in there. And you can see, it looks like we've got our processor down there 
And that's our jungly uh, video processor chip up there. So that one would be much easier to tap into. But as I said, I don't know, this one's bigger. It's uh, and, Right, so what I'm going to do is actually cut this jumper link here, which comes from pin 21, which was that commutate pin. And there's a resistor pull down there. So there's the jumper going over there. So if I cut that, it'll be pulled down to ground. So it's worth, don't even have to get the soldering iron out. I just cut that and see if our, and put the board back, see if our signal uh, changes, see if we get a blank screen. We shouldn't get anything. We shouldn't get our line said, ah, oh, no, okay. Oh, hang on. No, silly me, because that bypasses that, I believe that actually bypasses that video processor. So I, I'm going to have to tie one of the RGB lines, actually, because um, otherwise it's just going to be black. And that's what we're getting. Now, hang on. What we need to test is the input select, ah, the, the analog input video. So it obviously um, it's not ground. Don't. Okay, so what I've done now is just jumping it over to 5 volts. The link is still gone, so I'm not uh, driving it with anything else. Let's give that a burl. Now, of course, Murphy uh, could ensure that that is actually uh, software disabled, as we saw in the data sheet. Aha! Our snow, we got it. Our snow's gone. It switched it over. Beautiful. So the high, that pin being high switches it to the RGB input and it hasn't been disabled in software. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so we're just whacking a little resistor divider there from five volts directly on the pin and uh, we'll on to the red pin to see if we get a red screen at some intensity level. High voltage starts up. Should see our line again. Oh, no, no, no red. That's disappointing. Wah, 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 wah. No trap for young players. Here's the uh, RGB inputs here. And they've got all I did was I bypassed that. I had a resistor divider here. And I've come a gutsa because that's been overridden. And I used like a 10K and a 1K. Um, so it says uh, output impedance less than 1K. So it's got to be AC coupled. It's got internal voltage references. So uh, yeah, actually doesn't surprise me. Just stay blank. Oh, I need to drive it with either a lower impedance source or with the actual signal. And winner, winner, chicken dinner. If I feed in a just a one kilohertz sine wave, uh, 0.7 volts peak to peak, and it's of course unsynchronized to the thing, the sync rate. So that's why it's moving like that. And I can fiddle with that. There's two kilohertz, three, four, five. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> I love that. That's very nice. I reckon I can get that to stop. 100.63 hertz. <laughs> Beautiful. Anyway, that's just fed into the uh, via an AC uh, coupling cap, just 100 in. So that proves that it has actually switched over to the RGB input on that chip. Absolutely fantastic. But of course, it's still got the uh, still got the display on there. Now, of course, uh, this synchronization shouldn't be an issue if we uh, feed in both the RCA and the RGB signal because it should still uh, synchronize from the uh, the composite video input. So uh, that's that's the theory anyway. And hopefully uh, that will go away if we actually plug in a video signal. And yep, it does. All right, let's test out an RGB source with this. I've got an IBM PC Junior. I'll link in the video uh, for this if you haven't seen it. And I did an excellent repair video, if I do say so myself. Um, it was a good adventure on the keyboard as well. But anyway, this actually has a, an, an RGB output, but not a traditional uh, analog RGB output. It's actually got a CGA or color graphics adapter output, and that's actually a digital RGB. It has separate red, green, and blue signals, but they're actually digital instead of analog so you can only get seven uh, colors with those but it's also got a digital intensity pin as well and when you combine that with the uh, three red green and blue you can get up to 16 colors so unfortunately that's a digital signal but we're going to measure the signal level of that but I've also um, installed a little what a little uh, switch here that we can uh, switch between the RGB and the composite input so I've got the composite output from the IBM PC Junior so let's switch it on 
Ta-da! There it is. In all its glorious colour. Fantastic. Haven't got any. It's only got 128k. That's not a bad image, but uh, the good thing about the switch is that we'll, we'll be able to switch between composite and RGBs. Because we have to build a circuit first. Anyway, let's measure the RGB output. So the IBM PC Junior uses an annoying custom pin header connector, but I do have the cable that uh, converts that to the standard CGA D9 connector or something. Anyway, one of the RGB uh, signals there. Let's actually turn that off. There you can see the combination of uh, one set to two volts per division, one set to one. So that's basically what a three and a half volt uh, digital signal. So we're gonna have to uh, knock that signal level down to under a volt before we can uh, feed it directly into our uh, chip there but we can do that with a simple resistive divider just as i've got uh 220 ohms and 47 uh she'll be right but i haven't calculated it but that should be close i've got these uh, ac coupling caps these are just hanging off in uh, free air and uh, these will all be all tied together these will go to ground and these three caps dump solder that on the back there and that'll be just you know it, it's an okay solution i could do better but meh it'll do all right, that should do it uh, quite nicely. I've got uh, even got them color coded. Okay, that's hooked up to the CGA connector. You'll notice that I haven't bothered with the intensity pin. Uh, there's just no point for the purposes of today's experiment. Uh, anything else other than CGA, like a real RGB monitor, then uh, like I wouldn't be using this board. This is just a hack to get this working. All right, let's give it a bell. I think that's the composite, and that's the RGB. Doesn't like that at all. Damn. Well, hello, this is interesting. We have blue. And sure enough, yep, we only get all the blue information on the <laughs> boot screen. What the? Okay, that's actually the uh, green line. The red line looks the same as the blue. No, uh, I think there's actually something wrong with the, the junior because I'm getting nothing on any of the outputs now. We're minus the red, but we're getting there. It's a bad connection of the uh, custom connector, the uh, pin header connector on <laughs> the IBM PC. So yeah, that explains it. Shielding on that. Wow, they went to town. Anyway, watch what happens if I remove the uh, composite. This is the RGB one, of course. If I remove the composite, bingo, it loses sync because that's where it's getting the sync signal from now. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. There we go. That is composite. And hopefully you can see, once again, that shimmer. The black is not black. You switch it over to the RGB and, ah, oh, black as the ace of spades. I really like that. There's quite a significant difference there. Let me power it up. Get that beautiful eye beam. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Thing of beauty is joy forever. That's the composite. And that's the RGB. Wow, that makes a heck of a difference. Huge difference in that. Once again, I'll show you that rebooted. That's composite. And that's RGB. Wow. Big, big difference. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. That's how to convert a, a dumpster CRT like this into an RGB monitor. And this Sony one, we actually got lucky. We didn't have to disconnect any of the uh, EHT stuff or anything like that. They just had that board in there. And of course, yes, I can add a uh, switch to the back of it. I can add some BNCs or some RCAs on the back or a D connector or something like that. I'm not going to do that in this video. I just wanted to show you that it's actually possible to do that. Yeah, anyway, Way. I like this little Sony Trinitron. It's neat. Maybe it doesn't have the resolution of the... I don't know. I haven't looked at the specs of this. How many lines has it got? All that sort of jazz. Anyway, it does make a heck of a difference between RGB and composite. Um, it's absolutely terrific. And it's not that hard to mod one of these monitors. Sure, you've got to use uh, the composite for the sink there but hey that's okay of course you can use the external sink if you've got that and all sorts of stuff and we could look at feeding in the external sink and stuff like that but now i've got a switch that i can switch between composite and rgb <laughs> Brilliant. I like it. And nice little form factor, the Sony Trinitron there. Yeah, it's a little bit out on the alignment and stuff like that. So you'd have to get into the uh, service menu uh, or however you do it and actually adjust the uh, horizontal and vertical shift and stuff on that. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> we had a few little issues, but uh, yep, solved. So let me know what you think down below. And as always, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Catch you next time. Yeah.